Welcome everyone uh, to the machine learning coffee seminar. And uh, today we have uh, Chen He from uh, the University of Helsinki uh, talking about her uh, recent work on um, interactive visualizations for model comparison and model selection. Thanks for coming and please. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you everyone for being here. Yeah, my name is Chen I'm a postdoc from Ubiquitous Interaction Group. And um, today I'm going to present the work, uh, VIMS Interactive Visualization to support the sense making and the selection of predictive models. And uh, it's being presented in IOI conference this year, it's just the last week. And uh, it's a collaboration between University of Helsinki University, Harbin Engineering University, University of Turku, and the uh, Helsinki University Hospital. So uh, because I didn't get the visa to travel to IUI, so Julio gave me the opportunity to present here. So let's start. Uh, as you know, machine learning knowledge is spreading far and wide, and there are more and more open source models. The, the question we can ask is how can people with some machine learning knowledge to choose an optimal model to use? And people with some machine learning knowledge, we call them model users. So they do not necessarily have the skill and the time to create models themselves, but they just want to choose a model using their own data set. And so uh, we can build a scenario. They, uh, this, this scenario is from our related uh, work. And for instance, the, mod, uh, the user, model user, they have the data source and they upload the data and then they can check the data attributes, explore the data and decide which attributes they want to use as, as a variable to predict. And then they automatically generate uh, this uh, list of candidate models. Models are trained on the data and the task. And next uh, the user can explore the candidate models and maybe select some to export for real use. So our work lies in this block. After the models are trained, how can the user compare and uh, select a model? And to compare and select uh, predictive models, performance metrics alone are often not uh, sufficient. We need to use for instance, explanation techniques to see how the features behave with the models and they use visualizations to increase the transparency of the models. So we surveyed some related work which they build uh, visualization prototypes to compare and uh, select models. We focus on the target users of these prototypes. They are either model developers or model users. And uh, the prediction tasks can be classification or regression. And uh, then we analyze the views in these prototypes and whether they use the uh, explanation method. So, in the end, there are these three systems. They support all the different views. They provide the, the model performance view and the instance view and the feature view. And they use the XAI method. But uh, as you can see, they are all focused on model developers, not model users. And they don't have a formal user study to evaluate whether the prototype achieved the goal or not. So the goal of our research is to design an interactive visualization that enable model users to make sense of and select uh, predictive models. To achieve this, 
to model users and a visualization designer iterated on the prototype over the course of four months. And uh, we use the case to predict ICU patients' length of stay using their electronic health records. And in the end, we distilled the six design requirements. First uh, is to compare the overall model performance, which, which is quite straightforward. And the second is to support pairwise comparison of model predictions and errors on individual cases. So uh, the two model users suggested pairwise comparison rather than compare three or four models at the same time because it's a can lower the cognitive load of the users. And so in order to achieve the second requirement, the third requirement is to allow users to select any pair of models for comparison. And the fourth one is about the feature value and importance. So users want to explore the global and local feature importance of models. And the fifth one is the uh, visualize the similarity between the cases. And the last one is enable the user to explore the model predictions on the subset of the data so the user can filter the data. And so in the end, uh, based on the six design requirements, we created this prototype. Yeah, so the first part, the top left part, it's uh, uh, showing the overall, the first requirement overall model performance. And uh, the user can select uh, absolute error or absolute error or percentage error to explore the model performance. Uh, we created four models um, uh, abstracted as M1 to M4, and the four models intend to predict uh, patients' ICU length of stay by hours. So it's a regression task. And uh, we use this uh, 14 features and like blood pressure, heart rate, glucose, and the features are measured uh, in the first uh, 24 hours uh, each hour. And so there are more than 300 features and we use this feature to predict uh, patients' ICO length of stay. And here the model performance view, if you choose, you can choose different errors. And so the errors smaller, the better. And you can see here, maybe M1, M2, it's better than M3, M4. And then here, this is the matrix indicate uh, the average prediction difference between the two models. So this, if it's the value is small, the two models are similar. And here the M1, M2, it, it's quite similar compared with M1 and M3. And user can click on the table cell to select a pair of models. And so after select a pair of models, the scatter plot shows the individual prediction cases. So each dot is one patient. And the, if they align on the diagonal line means they, uh, the two models are quite similar. And the, the first scatter plot is prediction errors of the individual case. And the second, it's the prediction values. So maybe you can see M1 here, it's predicting mainly the five values. And maybe M2, it's more diverse, a little bit more diverse in predicted values. And third one, it's a projection. So project these 300 features onto the 2D canvas. So it visualizes the similarity of the patients if the two dots, they are close 
they are similar than the dots that are far away. And here, this part, it's uh, filters. You can select a, a subset of patient group to explore models. Then there's a feature view. Feature view contains two layers. The bottom layer is a colored. The blue color indicates the value is lower than uh, the the uh, the bottom layer of the colors indicates the feature values. The blue color indicates uh, the feature value is lower than the average, and the red color it's it's above average. So maybe here it uh, generate these three rows generally goes from blue to red indicates the patient went from from unconscious to conscious because there's a a Conscious uh, Glasgow coma scale uh, evaluates if the patient can open the eyes or have motor response or verbal response. And the top layer, there are two bars. Two bars indicate the feature importance from two models. And the left bar is the M. Now it's M1, right bar is M2. So the, the there are green bars indicate the top features. So here it's a GCS verbal response, if the patient has verbal response at the 24th hour indicates importance by both of these two models in predicting patient length of stay. And the user can also select a individual patient and to see how, how, what's the feature value measure of this patient. So the GCS scores goes from red to blue patient generally. This patient goes from conscious to unconscious then. And to show a use case with this prototype, we, we filter this patient to select cardiac vascular patients aged between 66 to 70. And, and you can see the error indicates M3, M4 has smallest error. So we choose M3, M4. And so there are five patients left after filtering. And they, they align on the diagonal line indicates M3, M4 give generally similar predictions. But then the domain expert, maybe doctor, they can evaluate this feature view to decide M3, M4, which one is better. And uh, first, uh, we look at we look at again the GCS scores uh, evaluates whether patients are conscious or unconscious. They they went from blue to red, from unconscious to conscious. And then the M3, the green bars indicate M3 highlighted three time points of this GCS scores at important. But uh, the doctor thinks cardiac vascular patients, GCS scores is not so important compared with cardiac vascular related features like uh, blood pressure. So so blood, for blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure M4 highlighted twice. And also here the 24th hour M4 highlighted uh, once. And also look at, uh, seems like M4 is better. And also look at the uh, fraction inspired oxygen. These are red colors at three, first three hours indicate that these patients, they are having machine assisted uh, breathing. So because of this, the patient's respiratory rates are not so trustworthy to be used for prediction, but M3 highlighted twice. So based on the analysis, the doctor decided to choose M4 as the model to use. Yeah, this is a case study. And then we did a user study with 16 subjects from the medical field. And first they went through the tutorial and then uh, explored three tasks using think aloud protocol. And 
asked them, they were interviewed on their feedback on the tool prediction task and the features used. In order for the user to use their domain knowledge to select the models, we hide the, the model performance view and also the individual prediction results. This, these two parts. And the first task is for them to select the important features to explore the color patterns in the scatter plot. So the user can select a feature from the feature view and see what the, the color patterns in the scatter plot. So now with uh, motor response at the 22 hours selected. And maybe uh, there's not uh, so obvious patterns. But here, here the verbal response at 22 hours selected. Maybe you can see the red colors the model tend to be to, to over predict and blue colors models tend to under predict. And the users can select uh, the features from multiple perspectives based on their domain knowledge, the, the green bars on the view, feature view, or the feature attribute. Like if there is a blue blue cell among the row of red cells, they can select to explore. And the second task, uh, ask them to select one patient. That M to M three have similar errors and compare the top features and justify which model do you prefer. And uh, majority of the users preferred M three over M two, and the difference is uh, statistically significant. And we also evaluated uh, model performance of between. M3 and M2, and turned out uh, M3 has better performance with over 1,000 instances. So we concluded that uh, analyzing the relation between feature value and contribution of an instance could inform model performance. And the third task uh, asked them to rank the four models, predicting the same to the use case predicting cardiac vascular patients aged between 66 to 70. And they have different uh, ways to rank the models, uh, either explore the global feature importance or, or explore the top uh, global features, which means the green bars. And local features means some select just one patient to explore the features of this patient and uh, rank the models. And the result of ranking shows in the box plots view. So if it's smaller, it's a better. So users tend to rank the M4 the best, M3, the M2, the M1. And then we evaluate the model performance with a larger data set. It uh, generally conforms to the ranking with the model performance. But the M2 turned out to be the worst model. And we can talk about the complexity of the analysis later. And based on the interview, the three, three users uh, give feedback that it's a well-integrated uh, interface to help evaluate the models. And five says it uh, exhibits a learning curve. And many users proposed uh, as next step, allow users to set the critical assumptions about the data to improve the predictions. But also machine learning experts says it requires a balance between the use of domain knowledge and machine intelligence. 
And as future work, um, because the for the third task, the model ranking, it's uh, there are some users did did not see M two perform the worst, and so during study we observed that uh, they had unstructured exploration, searching for plausible rather than accurate explanations. So some defects of a model could be noticed uh, by some users and then overlooked by others. The suggestion is to support systematic exploration within social contexts. And we can well, we can also try to, to adapt this prototype to classification models, not just the regression models, and also apply in other applications patient areas. And because the user report a learning curve of this prototype, maybe we can incorporate large language models so user can use natural language to ex explore the models to ease understand. So the conclusion, we propose the model agnostic uh, visualization that enables model users to compare models on performance instance and feature levels. A user study with 16 users evidenced that uh, VIMS is accessible to non-AI experts, can enable model analysis from multiple angles using their domain knowledge. And through the instance and feature analysis, user can select uh, better performing models. Yeah, thank you. And so, um, now, if you have any uh, questions, either here or in the chat, you may ask. Um, otherwise, I was curious about the models that we were comparing. Mm. Could you say a few words about what type of models they were actually? Uh, like two the, of them. Yeah. Two of them were not a, not a deep learning. One is decision tree, one is random forest, one is LSTM and uh, GRU for these four oh. models. Okay. Mm. And the users were kind of able to analyze the features, but they were not able to like exclude the model from using some feature or anything like this. No, because the models are already trained. Okay, these features. Mm. Yeah, there was no big mm. Then maybe another question was related to this uh, idea about uh, using the large language models. Do you know about other words uh, that are doing something like that? Because I think it's like very popular these days to apply LLMs. Um, but I haven't seen it in this context ever, so that sounded interesting. Yeah, I also haven't seen, but there are many proposals to use larger language model to explain model. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's, it's currently like at the stage that many people are talking about it. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. It's not being done yet. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, if we don't have any. Oh. There is a question from the chat. Uh, so JR is asking if you are familiar with the news point system. And uh, had there been any talk comparing how that human predictive model compared to AI models? Uh, maybe you can actually see the uh, message because there's a link to some material. Yeah. Um. No, thanks for the information. I don't know about this system. Yeah, it looks quite uh, relevant.
there is a completely different type of model like this. Um, yeah. Huh? I'm not sure this news too is this a is a model or some kind of Mm. Yeah, so something a bit different anyway. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, but thanks for the information. <laughs> okay, then uh, thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for joining, also online. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Let's thank the speaker again.